The next accelerator type that we are going to examine is a linear induction accelerator, or a betatron. Its operating principle is quite simple. It is an array of ferromagnetic cores, the so-called inductors. These are ring cores, around each of which there is a coil, through which electric current impulses are conducted. When the magnetic field is changed, it generates an electric vortical field around this core, which is concentrated on its axis with the help of a special metal screen. It is along the axis of a few such cores where the beam is accelerated. Current impulses are provided with a special time delay in order for the beam to gain energy while passing through each inductor. The construction of accelerators of this kind began after the Second World War. One of the leading creators of such accelerators was the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research. Here you can see a photo of the inductor of the first accelerator in Dubna called Selund. In Dubna, the development of such accelerators was related to the elaboration of collective acceleration methods. Today, induction accelerators are employed as drivers for masers on free electrons. The maser emission itself, the coherent radio frequency emission, may be used both for carrying out various technological processes and for sufficiently promising developments at our institute such as the opportunity to use these accelerators to cure cancerous diseases. The next type of accelerator is the Linear Resonant Accelerator, or Radio Frequency Resonant Accelerators, and they have their own special branch. These are standing electromagnetic wave accelerators, which historically emerged first. The variety of standing electromagnetic wave accelerators is a structure with drift tubes or focusing the beam with radio frequency quadrupoles. The first accelerator of this kind was built by Rolf Widerow in 1928. It was a purely demonstrative version, which was built to display the principle itself. The complexity of using the electric field of an electromagnetic wave lies in the fact that during the acceleration time, an electromagnetic field repeatedly changes its direction from accelerating to decelerating and vice versa. To ensure a stable energy gain, it is necessary to fulfill a certain resonant condition. Widerow suggested a structure consisting of a sequence of drift tubes. A drift tube is a metal cylinder with no electric field inside it. The electric field is concentrated in the gaps between the neighboring drift tubes. Alternating voltage is applied to the neighboring drift tubes. For a particle to be steadily accelerated, the transit time inside each tube must be equal to half of the radio frequency field period. In this case, particles cross each gap in the accelerating phase. Widerow's first accelerator had only two accelerating gaps. It accelerated up to 35 kV and couldn't be considered an accelerator. Later on, numerous accelerators were built based on this principle. Another type of a standing electromagnetic wave accelerator was proposed by Louis Walter Alvarez. The first version of this accelerator was built in 1945. This accelerator entered physics folklore as a legendary facility. Only the first resonator was created. The diameter of the resonator was 17 meters. The drift tubes placed along the axis of the resonator weighed around 2 tons each. They were driven inside the resonator on a truck and lifted with a special crane into their work position. This accelerator failed to start up due to the fact that no one could manage to inject the required magnitude of electromagnetic power because of the radio frequency breakdowns. In the following years, Alvarez revamped the construction and the accelerator became more compact. Today, accelerators based on the so-called E-cavity are called Alvarez accelerators. 
an accelerator with spatial homogeneous quadrupole focusing or a radio frequency quadrupole accelerator, RFQ, was proposed in 1970 in the USSR by famous acceleration scientists Kapczynski and Teplyakov. The first accelerator of this type was built at the Institute for High Energy Physics in Bratvino, where the workability of the very principle was demonstrated. Its design is quite simple. It includes four rods to which alternating voltage is applied and which have diameter modulation of these rods along their length. At the same time, there is a wide variety of resonators feeding the four rod line. Our Joint Institute for Nuclear Research has two of these accelerators. One of them is an element in the injection chain for light ions, for the Nika complex and the nucleotron. This light ion injection chain consists of a small accelerator with spatial homogeneous quadruple focusing and an Alvarez accelerator. Originally, this accelerator had been created for injection into the synchrophasotron. Then it was used for injection into the nucleotron. In the future, it will be used for injection into the nucleotron as part of the NICA project. This accelerator is called LU20. It accelerates protons up to 20 mega electron volts and light ions up to 5 mega electron volts per nucleon. The second standing wave accelerator that is in the possession of the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research is also one of the elements of the future NICA complex. It is a gold ion accelerator which includes one section with spatial homogeneous quadrupole focusing, RFQ, and two sections with drift tubes operating on a special type of resonator. This accelerator became operational in 2016. It is the first element of the upcoming NICA complex.